a new software update is now available for your Mac and whether you are a developer beta or a public beta, you get to see this update. Going into the system settings right here, you can see software update page. It shows that there's a new software update available and this is Mac OS 26 beta 8. Now this update for me on my M1 Pro MacBook Pro comes in at exactly 11.5 five gigs and I was updating from Mac OS 26 beta 7. It's kind of a large update file size but we'll talk more about that a bit later but just to keep you in the loop you can see that today Apple released beta 8 versions of iOS 26, iPad OS 26, Mac OS 26, TV OS 26, Vision OS 26, Watch OS 26 and all these I do cover here on the channel so do subscribe so that you don't miss out and now what I'm quickly going to do is update my Mac Mac to this new version of Mac OS Tahoe and then we're gonna look at some of the changes that this software update has to offer. Just like that my Mac has now been updated to the latest version. Now let's begin with the software changes that are here with this update. It's been a couple of hours and I let the device do everything i let it do indexing in the background you can see no more indexing in the apps app so it's good that way but when it comes to the settings you saw how slow it is sometimes to load cancelling things you can see how that affects it in a way i'm not sure why this is the case you can see question mark right there some of the app icons are still a bit slow to load but this wasn't the case when I was testing and searching for different changes in the background. But you can see when it comes to uh, the storage of macOS that it's utilizing at this point in time, macOS itself is taking 24.26 gigs. And if we click on the more info tab, you can see the version and the build number that we have. So the build number is now 25A5349 alpha so it ends with an a a second consecutive a build and apple intelligence hasn't really changed it's still taking 12.69 gigs at the same time apple released this update i think i mentioned it before they also released the public beta 5 equivalent of this developer beta 8 so whether you are a public beta tester or developer beta tester you pretty much have the same update today just from the background resources and what i've been able to find it does seem like this update is more of a stability and bug fix update but a couple minor changes have been spotted for example when you access your notification tab it seems like there's more depth to the shadow background that you see right there so it seems to be more prominent just minor and at the same time safari version was updated it always is most of the time so if we go to about safari you can see the version right there and if we open a couple different tabs you can see how it looks it's probably here to stay and a lot of people aren't too happy about this new change when it comes to the tab layout of safari so hopefully apple eventually listens to the feedback that a lot of users are putting in the liquid glass in the control center seems to be more like slightly frosted in a way it's not as translucent as it was before but it's a very subtle change one which is barely noticeable there's also quite a number of things using pretty high cpu demand in the background so for example you can see the uvca assist this is a kernel task and you can see that is using about 132 percent and it fluctuates. one which was using quite a lot was actually the shortcuts but it seems like it's sort of died down and they take turns maybe this is the always sort of settling in the background but keep an eye out of this i think after a couple of days maybe two or three days this might change if it doesn't then maybe i might do a follow-up or a tweet about it just to let you know how this continues to affect my device now in terms of what's next from apple i have my notes right here and uh, you're probably wondering why i have 2024 pulled up and it's for a reason because we want to compare last year and this year and see what we can sort of guesstimate what apple might do so last year when it comes to mac os 15.0 it was the big update last year so beta 8 was released slightly two days later on august 28th so today we got it a few days early so august 28th came that's when uh beta 8 came out and then there was no beta 9 of course the update that came after that was the release candidate version which is why a lot of users are 
under the impression that this will be the last beta before the release candidate so august 28th that's when beta 8 came out and then apple completely skipped this whole week of september 2nd to september 6th no beta or release candidate version came out so apple completely skipped that and then they released the release candidate version on september 9th 2024 and at the same time they also announced the event of the iphone 16 event so yeah this year um after that after that on september 16 then mac os 15 officially came out to the public and to everyone on september 20th if you ordered the iphone 16 that's when it became available now comparing that with today we can see that um today being the 25th maybe next week apple might not release any beta version between this week of september 1st to um september 5th so they might completely skip this whole week and they might not announce any new uh hardware and then next week after that on september 8th apple might release the release candidate version of mac os 26 and at the same time they might also choose to announce the iphone 17 event and once they do that pre-orders might open or, or the iphone actually might be available in stores on september um september 19 2025 that's just a guesstimate based on what apple has done in the past and the other thing that i wanted to show you before i conclude this was my geekbench scores comparing uh beta 7 right there so my results showed up on this display i'll just put them right here so that's beta 7 and then beta 8 side by side so beta 8 you can see it right there beta 7 results are pretty much the same beta 8 is slightly lower by one but it's, it's on par with what you are seeing with beta 7 right there and then for the multi-core score you can see here that this beta 7 was slightly higher it's kind of a bummer because i didn't really get to test beta 7 that much i just had you know a couple of things going on but other than that the results aren't too far apart compared to the you know what you see on beta 7 and beta 8 when it comes to single core and multi-core performance so that's it for me when it comes to this update let me know what you think about this video keep an eye on your activity monitor let me know if there are any abnormal cpu or ram usage and if there are we'll send them to in the feedback assistant app to apple and maybe i'll be able to test out some of them and see if that's something that i'm experienced so that's it for me for now if you like this video leave a like and subscribe and i'll see you in the next one